Good afternoon, everyone. Enrico, a man with a lot of hats and who clearly needs no introduction, will talk to us about consensually doing things together. So please welcome him. Um, 
one should know exactly what and how much one is agreeing to, express their intent to participate and decide freely and voluntarily to participate. So, Debian-wise, how many of you uh, decided freely and voluntarily to participate in Debian? How many of you expressed the intent to participate? How many of you knew exactly what and how much? <laughs> my point. There's a need of a talk like this. <laughs> so yeah. Um, consent requires awareness. Uh, like in a relationship, um, uh, it's not like, can we do this? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Okay, you said yes. That it's not, doesn't work like that. And in that end, it's the same. Would you like to? Uh, be an FTB master, uh, or you like to be a release manager? Oh yeah, sounds like a nice idea. Uh, okay, uh, what is this about? Oh yeah, now your whole life for the next year and a half belongs to us. Um, no. Um, and uh, and then there needs to be yeah awareness and um, and, and to uh, be in a position of being able to give consent. So say I'm in a relationship and I say, oh, I decided I won't do, I won't do laundry anymore. And if I say it when the other partner is tired or busy doing things, they may say, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. If I say it when the other partner has a chance to say, uh, why? <laughs> uh, tell me more. And then take part in a negotiation. So, okay, what, what's wrong with doing laundry? Okay, maybe then you can do something else, or we can have someone to do laundry or something. And the two situations are very different. So, consent requires being there and being in a position to express it, knowing one has other options, and all that sort of things. Um, the, there's an because nobody has written many guides about consent on, uh, um, on many articles about consent on free software, but on polyamory, yes, then we're going to steal them. The people in Debian are more important than Debian. Uh, poor personal boundaries are damaging to the self, that we'll expand on this later but you need to know what's good and what's not good for yourself before having people, before saying yes and no when people ask you to do things. You cannot consent if you do not have a choice. Uh, previous consent never overrides withdrawal of consent. You can always say no, even if you had just said yes. Debian, so uh, that was the generally about consent. It's not just saying, uh, 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 getting consent from someone is not just forcing them to say yes with whatever means needed. Um, because one wouldn't, if, if I'm at the other end of that, I don't feel like that's consent. So, um, and that was about consent. Now, relationships. Uh, Debian is the universal operating system. And Debian is made and maintained by people. The long-term health of Debian is a consequence of the long-term health of the relationship between Debian contributors. Debian doesn't need to be technically perfect, it needs to be socially healthy. If there's a technical problem in Debian, but Debian is socially healthy, then there is a community of people that can fix the technical problem. If Debian is socially unhealthy, no matter how good is the operating system, it won't fix the society make, or the, the people making it. At least with what software is so far. Maybe there's going to be a new package tomorrow that fixes people. But, uh, well, there's a psychologist in Emacs, but I use Debian, so I don't know how good that is. <laughs> um, 
tell us more about using music. <laughs> no, that was uh, in the previous talk. The, the one I gave in other time, you go and see it in, in, in the video that there's a, that it covers Beam and Emacs. But um, this is before 10 pm. So, um, so, healthy community. Um, this is called Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument. I don't know what that means, but I like the graph. Uh, and I like to quote the, that it has a name. Uh, I will at some point post the notes, they will have links. Can you describe the graph briefly? Yes. Um, on the horizontal axis, there's focus on the relationship or cooperation. The more one is to the right, the more one moves to the right, the more there is cooperation. The more one moves to the left, the less there is cooperation. On the vertical side, there's focus on agenda or assertiveness. The more I'm down in the graph, the more I do not care for my own needs or for what I want or for my goals. The more I go up in the graph, the more I care for what I want. So at the bottom left, uh, where there is little focus on cooperation and little focus on my own goal, there is avoidance. I don't care. Meh. Withdraw from the situation, maintain neutrality, whatever. And moving up towards no cooperation, but I want my own goals, there is competition. I win, you lose. Zero sum game. Um, I don't care about you all. I want this to happen. It will happen no matter what. Instead, uh, down, so no focus on personal goal, but focus on relationship. There is accommodation. You win, I lose. Concede to the other party as long as harmony is maintained. Yeah, have it your way. I don't want to have a fight with you. I won't have what I need. Won't do what I want. But at least you still love me. Um, in the middle, so some focus on cooperation and some focus on personal goals, there is compromise. I win some, I lose some. It's minimally acceptable to all, it doesn't damage the relationship, but it kind of feels like a trade-off for everyone. And maximum attention to goals and maximum attention on the relationship, there is collaboration. I win, you win, where we work together to expand the range of possible options to achieve win-win outcomes. So at the moment it seems we have a conflict and none of us can have all we want. And instead of fighting over it, we can cooperate over it to try and find out if there are other ways that we haven't thought individually uh, about, but that together we may find, of having something that really works for all of us. And this, uh, I think, because we are a technical project, and technical outcomes are easy to measure, it boots. It doesn't have conflicts, it installs, uh, it runs on 32 and 64 bit machines, yes. Uh, that's a big focus on goals. Uh, there's bugger ports when somebody's goals are not achieved by software. So that focus on goals is very easy to see and we need to deliver on time, a release and so on. Um, so I think we've had a lot of focus on that. Uh, but what's more important, I think, for the long-term health of the project and for the current happiness of people in the project is focusing more on the relationship. And if we, if we don't really achieve all our goals, but the relationship is good, it means if we haven't achieved our goal this year, we'll achieve it next year. If we only focus on goals, it means if we don't achieve our goal this year, we'll never achieve it. Because there won't be a next year. With, with a community to, 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 to work on it. So, uh, I would like to move on to motivation. 
in, in this relationship between a lot of people, every one of us has motivations. How many of you do things in Debian because you want to? How many of you do things in Debian because you have to? Right. How many of you do both? Okay. So this because you have to means there's something oh, I think I should do. Right, I think I should do. Now, that's very interesting. Uh, should is a word which means I don't want to, but... <laughs> um, and actually, um, in, it's quite interesting in relationships to realize when somebody says should. Um, take care that it actually means I don't want to, but. Because, yeah. Um, uh, oh, there's more such uh, interesting words in relationship I can mention later. Like we. We is a terrible word. We really should be aware of that. <laughs> we means I don't want to take responsibility for what I'm saying, so I'm pulling you into it whether you want it or not. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, whatever are your motivations to be in Debian, some may be healthy, some may be unhealthy. Healthy motivations sustain the relationship. Unhealthy motivations to be in a relationship may explode spectacularly at some point. Um, movies are full of unhealthy motivations to be in a relationship. Movies with only healthy motivations to be in a relationship are boring. <laughs> but... You know, like, Italy is wonderful for tourism, but not very good to live in it. It's the same with, with, with um, relationships. Be better be boring and healthy than exciting and unhealthy. Um, oh, about motivation. Um, Madame Thu, what did I click on? Madame Thu made a wonderful, wonderful, created a wonderful, wonderful world for um, uh, a kind of task in Debian, which is a Galadriel. Uh, a Galadriel is a task that you have to do, otherwise Sauron takes over Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> and which is summarized by this slide. And by the way, Frodo looks consensually into it. <laughs> from uh, Francesca Stock at uh, the mini DevConf in uh, the Debian Women in DevConf in Barcelona. And there's some of that I think in Debian as well. And we uh, we <laughs> I encourage everyone to uh, be aware of them and, and yeah. Um, and for example, with myself, what motivates me to start a project or pick one up in Debian? I have an idea for something fun or useful, or I see that something is broken and I have an idea how to fix it. If one makes a parallel with relationships, that second part may not work as well. But, um, back to Debian, what motivates me to keep maintaining a project? Oh, nobody else can do it. Nobody else can be trusted to do it. Nobody else who can and can be trusted to do it is doing it. Or somebody is paying me to do it. So, I, it seems I have a problem motivating myself to others keep maintaining things. Differently. What? Others may do it differently. Yeah, others may have it differently. Yeah, that, that was me. You mean wrong. Um, <laughs> what? You mean wrong. Or he means wrong. He doesn't mean different. Differently is wrong. <laughs> I think that's trust. Yes. 
I'm confused. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> said, somebody else may do it differently. He, ah. said, he corrects me. Ah. He, others may do it wrong. Ah, so you said somebody else may be doing differently. Tolib said somebody else may be doing it wrong or differently wrong. Um, there's um, other example of motivations. It takes me a little time, it's useful for me, it's fun, it saves me time to keep something running, to, 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 to make a continuous effort to keep something running, then if I don't care about it, one day it breaks in my face. Um, other example of motivation, it makes me feel useful. Is it healthy? Is it not healthy? It depends on people. I feel a bit scared by doing something because I feel useful, because the day I stop, I become useless. And I'm sad, so I can't stop, otherwise I'm very sad. Um, or getting positive feedback, it's... Um, yeah. um, so, awareness of why I'm doing something. Um, helps me in consensually decide whether I want to keep doing it. If I don't know why I'm doing something, then I keep doing it by habit, and 20 years into a boring relationship, I wonder where did my life go. Um, yeah. That was motivation. On to. One word of advice: Don't work as motivational speaker. What? Don't work as motivational speaker. Oh, don't work as motivational speaker. Yeah. No, I mean these are examples of bad motivation. They have good motivations. Examples of good motivations. Raise hands. Why? Steve. Because it's fun. Because it's fun. Yes. Um, good for relationships as well. More? Yeah? Because it makes the world a place I'd rather, or I'm more likely to want to live in. Because it makes the world a place I uh, rather like to live in. Yes. Because it helps me learn new things. Because it? It helps me learn new things, yes. Uh, that is also nice in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> At least I, I like it also. But... I can achieve a result that is aesthetically appealing. I can achieve a result that is aesthetically appealing? Yeah. Because I like working with these people. I like working with these people. Okay. It keeps me sane. It keeps me sane. <laughs> you, audience, should work as a motivational speaker. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Motivations. Nice. Then I'll, I'll re-watch the talk. And, and, and. Because I, I, I really like what you said. And... Next, step, next topic, energy. Energy is that thing which is measured in spoons. Um, the concept of spoons comes from uh, people suffering with chronic health issues. And it's a metaphor saying that you wake up with a certain amount of spoons and doing things will cost you spoons that you lose along the way, and when you're out of spoons, you are done, you can't do anything anymore. And so, someone with chronic health may require a certain amount of effort in washing hair, making breakfast, because it's harder than others, and so on. Uh, but, and this metaphor is kind of, uh, is used in general to talk about energy one feels for doing things. Uh, so this is the example of washing hair, making breakfast, doing laundry, that, that, that are everyday tasks that may be hard for uh, uh, people with chronic illness, but uh, 
uh, we also have uh, spoon costs in Debian. Uh, So my spoon costs. What? No spoon. Never mind. Try a web version of that. Significant amount. <laughs> um, so I made random numbers here, but uh, every activity kind of has a cost in energy. So say a routine task is one spoon, but a context switch is two spoons. Because I need to forget what I'm doing and, and get into the, the, the whole context of something else. There's a new corner case, maybe a lot of spoons, because it's something I never dealt before and I really need to engage all I have into try and understanding and, and engage, maybe find other people to, 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 to figure out what to do and, and so on. And uh, maybe a well-written bugger port can give me spoons, because which uh, uh, the negative spoons may not exist in, in the world where this metaphor came from. Uh, I don't know, but in, in, in case of that, that could be something that motivates me. Or there's an interesting thread I like to read and, and gets me excited about something. There's a flame war that makes me lose spoons. Or I release a new software and somebody doesn't tell me whether they use it or not, but they tell me that uh, it uses the wrong uh, UI toolkit. And that's minus 10 spoons. <laughs> uh, interestingly, like, if I have five routine tasks in the same context, it may be five spoons or less. Maybe there's an economy of scale. If I have five routine tasks in five different parts, that may cost me uh, five plus eight, 13 spoons, because I have two spoons of context switch in between each task. Uh, so, uh, I, I want to say this because um, the work we do with Debian costs energy. Um, and, and we, I keep saying we. Um, Um, so, uh, work in Debian costs and what is one person capable of doing uh, are the things that, uh, as a project, we expect a person to do, the things that one person can actually do. Is there any release manager in the room? <laughs> um, Right, uh, and because we are Debian, and there's a lot of excellent people in Debian, we have a history of people who manage to do anyway stuff that we wouldn't expect a person to really be able to do. Like, I don't know, replying beautifully to all sorts of posts in mailing lists, or uh, managing insane complexity of a release or fixing whatever dependency alone or, or something. Uh, 
and I'm thankful to people who manage to do that, but I would like to show compassion to them, but not glorify them, not take them as a model of what everybody should do. I would like Debian to be based not on heroes, but on reasonable expectations. Both expectations on others and on, my, on oneself. If you are out of spoons, you are out of spoons. You don't need to keep going. If you need spoons for something else that isn't Debian, use them for something else. If you are out of spoons for something important and nobody else can do it, it is not your problem. It is a problem in the community. And from the outside point of view, if someone is out of spoons, they are out of spoons. They don't get more spoons if you insist. If you insist, you probably take even more spoons away from them. If somebody needs their spoons for something else, they are entitled to them. If someone gets out of spoons for something important and nobody else can do it, it's not their fault. It's a shared responsibility. It was a problem that would put someone in a position where if they don't do things, Sauron takes over Middle Earth. <laughs> Debian is a shared responsibility. Don't expect few people to take care of everything. And, leave sp and when you are a person that takes care of a lot of things, leave space for more people to take responsibility for things. Turnover empowers. Because I know I'm, I, I can do something without getting stuck into it, because there is turnover. I can play with this for as long as I have fun, and when I stop having fun, move on to something else. Humans are a renewable resource, but only if you think of them that way. Also, when spoons are limited, what takes more energy tends not to get done. So if we all overwork and run on, on very tight energy budgets, well, if I overwork and I run a very tight energy budget, then routine tasks I can manage. Non-routine tasks get stuck in my mailbox waiting for a day with more free time or energy or spoons, which will probably never happen, because even looking at that inbox will require an increasing amount of spoons, because I know I have a vague idea of the nightmare that isn't there. So, if I run on a tight energy budget, am I able to listen when tricky cases happen? Am I able to respond? Am I able to listen and respond when socially tricky cases happen? That are maybe even more demanding, because it's not just a strange bug that maybe I can reproduce and I don't know how to fix it, but there's a, some a tricky social situation that I don't know how to deal with. And on a tight energy budget, uh, am I able to listen or respond when harassment happens? Uh, Am I able to tell people raising valid issues from troublemakers? Those are all difficult things. Um, um, in the new member process, on a tight energy budget, it's easier to accept a new maintainer than to reject them. So, when overworked, there is no filtering, or there is less filtering it becomes hard or impossible to make a call on a controversial candidate. Uh, suppose I'm tired. Why I receive a bug report? Why would you report a bug? I don't want to deal with your bug. Maybe you're wrong and your bug is invalid. It would be good if you were wrong and your bug was invalid. Uh, maybe I'll read the first two lines and decide that maybe your bug is invalid. Uh, not on the right side of things. It's not uh, focus on cooperation. It's more like focus on personal goals. My personal goal is to not spend any more energy for today. Therefore, 
avoidance competition or depending on if I even have energy for reaching my goals. Also, there could be a task that requires so many, so much energy today and it grows and it, re it requires more and more in the future. So, you are this frog on a beautiful swimming pool that gets warmer and warmer and it turns out it's a pot uh, and you're stuck into it and nice and cooked. Um, are tasks that we are used to be workable still humanly achievable? Like release, done, DPL. Um, the more these tasks become inhumanly achievable, the more we require heroes to take care of them and not just any person. And although we have several heroes in Debian, heroes are rare, they're hard to replace, they burn out, they can become martyrs, they can become villains, and in general, they tend to be accidents waiting to happen. Because you have no choice than having a hero. Um, so, I, I would encourage everyone to be aware of how much energy you are spending on things, how much energy you are acquiring from other people and if there's some if you feel like some person is doing an inhuman job consider checking how's the situation and and, uh, and if they need help and if there could be a different way to organize that part of Debian so that it goes from a superhuman task to a merely human task that humans can do Another thing of energy imbalance is the dictatorship of who has more spoons. Someone who has a lot of energy can take more and more tasks out of people who have less energy. Sounds nice. But after a while, it slowly drives everyone else away. Because it's like, oh, oh, you don't have time to do that, I'll do that. Oh, I don't want to wait for you, ah, whatever, I'll do it and so on and so on and you had a team slowly you have one person and the focus moved from cooperation towards goals then that person ends up being a hero and you have another person who's too big to fail and another accident waiting to happen um, and that's another like potential issue with sometimes over enthusiastic people that come with a lot of energy and if the situation is not managed decently it does risk destroying a team partner in public 
And at that point, you don't just have to deal with the argument, but also with your reputation and your self-perception shattering. Um, so one thing I hate about Debian is a consistent track record of technical excellence. <laughs> I don't want to be required to always be right. And one of my favorite moments in the history of Debian is the SSH key generation problem. Because um, it's an example of how Debian doesn't need to be technically perfect, it needs to be socially healthy, and technical problems can be fixed. Um, so there was this big issue, it was a, a mistake done in good faith. Um, the person who was maintaining SSH at the moment is still maintaining SSH now and is still very highly valuable by everyone and very highly valued by everyone and the focus on that was not on blame it's a mistake that anyone could have made uh, so uh, the focus of the project was how to correct the mistake how to deal with key migration, how to change the workflow of Debian so that that kind of mistake will be harder to do in the future. So I would like to remove perfectionism in Debian, make mistakes and focus more on having a, a focus on cooperation so that even though we don't achieve our goals we can work around that, we can achieve them next time. We are a community that is still able to achieve indefinite amounts of goals. And also, if we discover we've been wrong all the time in something important, it's not the end of Debian, it's the beginning of an improved Debian. It's cool, it's great if I find out that all I've done so far is wrong, it means I stopped doing something wrong. Right. Then, about motivations, perfectionism, energy and so on, sometimes we get people that are too good to be true. And there comes a point in most people dating experience when one learns that when some things may feel too good to be true, they might indeed be too good to be true. For example, there are people who cannot say no. Uh, maybe they have fear of criticism, fear of making mistakes. Whatever you ask of them, they say yes. I'll do it. I'll do my best. Yes, I like that. I'd like to go out to a concert? Yeah, sure. You think everything is great, you live together with them for years, and you discover they've been suffering all the time and you never had a clue. You've been abused them for years, in good faith, and you didn't know. Or there are people who cannot take a no. People who um, have a problem with a sense of worth, like by default they wouldn't feel like they have a sense of worth and they depend on a constant supply of achievement and admiration to feel a sense of worth. Therefore they have a lot of spoons to invest into getting this constant supply of achievement and admiration and it would be really nice, convenient, I mean, makes them happy, makes the project happy, except one day something they do is challenged one points out a mistake they made, or one points out a problem with their behavior, and all hell breaks loose because they see not just what they've done, challenged, but their whole sense of worth, their whole being gets caught into the challenge, and the reaction is a spectacular outburst of, this, or outburst of destructive rage. So, it's not a problem to have people like that in Debian, we probably have many, but it's good to be aware, it's good to, um, 
and also it's good to make an effort to keep interactive constructively with the rest of the community. Um, and to be aware of these patterns to compensate for one's own tendencies. Uh, I might know that I have a problem in saying no. And it's not constructive to ignore it when dealing with Debian because I tend to overcommit and, and people think that I'm doing a lot of things and that I can't cope. Um, or, yeah, or if what I need is this supply of achievement and admiration, I will drift towards the competition side of the chart and uh, tend to destroy the cooperation, the team I'm in, and so on. More um, awareness exercise to things from relationships are flags. Uh, and, uh, any of you heard of red flags? Not that many. That's a red flag. <laughs> um, a red flag is when something smells, like something happened that is not a big deal, but it could be the tip of an iceberg of trouble. Um, so, um, you report a bug, uh, the maintainer closes it without replying, without saying anything. You're like, hey, why did you close the bug? The maintainer says, stop bothering me, red flag. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe that's not a person that should be answering bugs. I don't know. Same for future reference. If it keeps happening, if I keep collecting red flags, then maybe we have a problem. That's the idea of a red flag. And, and of a green flag, it's the opposite. It's a, a tip of potentially an iceberg of nice. Say, uh, I have an argument with someone, and at the end of the argument, we are more friends than before, and we agreed on a solution that works for both, and it was great. Green flag. That seems like a person that's nice to, to, to interact with. Um, And if you have examples of green flags in Debian, red flags in Debian, uh, runner, I think. Did you raise a hand? You can shout it out, repeat it. Somebody was having a bad day and you got a bad reply. And it's tough when you trigger someone else's rage for reasons you don't understand. Right. When you trigger someone else's rage for reasons that you don't understand. Red flag. Yeah. Green flag? When you get a mic. Green flag when you get a, a quick uh, coherent response to something you asked about? Yes. Uh, coming? Mike is coming. Yes, when you get a quick response saying, I can't deal with this now. Yes. Um, quick response saying, I can't deal with this now, a green flag. In a relationship, somebody says no. Green flag. You know they can say no. Somebody says no to help me and die, maybe red flag. <laughs> <laughs> Green flag if it's a no, but I'll call someone. Right. And then apologies. There. 
it's um, a nice article, a better way to say sorry. I, I've actually seen it in, in several different ways. I don't know if this is the original article or something, but uh, it's, it's the one I have. Um, which makes the point that apologizing is not about making the person who apologizes feel better because they wash the thing from their conscience, but about fixing the problem or making an effort to understand, fix the problem, make sure it doesn't happen in the future. So um, that's the, that's normal in software, right? You receive a bug report and you don't say, oh sorry, and close the bug. <laughs> you make an effort to reproduce it, understand it, make the fix, upload the new version, and then close the bug, right? It's, um, socially, it could be exactly the same. So there's this um, guide to apologizing uh, properly, which is, uh, number one, I'm sorry for, and then repeat what happened that caused the problem. So, trying to reproduce the bug. And this was wrong because, and uh, I understand that, that what happened uh, caused this thing. So, uh, reproduce the bug and find out uh, where in the software is the code that is misbehaving. And in the future, I will, you know, change, uh, try to uh, change your behavior so that that thing doesn't happen, or patch the software. Uh, so we get it right. Um, oh, sorry. And number four, will you forgive me? Uh, make sure that your efforts are um, not just to make yourself happy, but also to. Uh, address the problem in the other person, you make sure you are also making the other person uh, okay after the problem that you caused. So will you forgive me, is, uh, does it fix the bug for you? Uh, identical, we get it right technically, this is the parallel socially, we can adopt it socially, and then any issue that happens is potential uh, it, instead of an issue that happens, instead of being a cause for embarrassment, becomes a cause for growth. And I think it's beautiful. Don't be afraid to fail or drop the ball. As Andy was saying, green flag, I don't have time for this now. Uh, was it more or less that? Um, I think that anything that comes with any kind of Galadriel thing, if you don't do it, Sauron will take over Middle Earth, should not fall on anybody's shoulders, should be shared no matter what, either shared or dropped. I would prefer in Debian if this kind of, if you don't do it, nobody will tasks, would more be more likely to be met with Okay, then I won't do it and nobody will. That side will, will be down and, until somebody can take care of it. So you can't, I can't do it. Rather than, okay, sucks to be me, I'll take a week holiday and try to fix it. Because the second is not sustainable. It looks sustainable, uh, but it's a false sense of security. We have stuff running on and abuse. And I don't want to run that on abuse, that's kind of the point of this talk. And the responsibility for a healthy relationship is shared. Um, maybe it's my first relationship and I'm together with somebody who's been dating people for ages. And, and I'm like, oh, I don't know anything about this dating stuff. Uh, I'll expect that the more experienced person will take care of everything. That does not work. Uh, a healthy relationship is a responsibility of both. 
Maybe I have stuff to learn from the other person, but I still need to take responsibility for what I do. And uh, the responsibility for a healthy Debian community is a shared responsibility. It's not only the responsibility of anti-harassment and DAM and the list master and the DPL. Anyone is entitled and encouraged to participate and try to make the social side of Debian more on the right side of the graph towards focus on cooperation. And, and also we have a project with active people counted by the thousand, official members or non-members, uh, and it's unlikely that harassment isn't happening. And Anti-harassment sees very little because uh, we don't have uh, an awareness for what is harassment, or uh, people may think that it's not worth the hassle of reporting and kicking a fuss about it. Um, but also, I don't expect anti-harassment to deal with everything that happens in that that would be an inhuman task and however if you're a member of any team it's also your responsibility for making it a healthy team and uh, if you see someone who is uncomfortable you can you know, send a private message saying are you okay or do you need uh, how can i help you or uh, if you feel uncomfortable you can ask somebody else in the team that you talked to before, is it just me or there's something strange in what just happened? And find support and give support if you have the spoons. Otherwise, uh, redirect to somewhere who may have the spoons. And then the harassment may be the ultimate fallback redirection on a, communi a community that the more it's healthy, the more it can heal what happens locally. That would be, in my opinion, ideal. And then, finally, um, do not invalidate people. Um, if something tries something in Debian, try to um, acknowledge that, accept that somebody is doing something and that it's okay that they do something. Then you can give feedback on what they're doing, but <laughs> try to make, uh, to, to, to not block, not stand in the way of what people are doing unless what they're doing is actually hurting you, then uh, collaboration side may help better. It's okay that if you don't like the general thing that they're doing, you don't need to validate everyone, but at least don't stand in the way. Um, I personally don't care if people tell me I'm good when I do something, I perceive it a bit like good boy, good dog. <laughs> um, I rather prefer if people say, oh, that's useful, or uh, how does it work? Like show an interest, or what do you need to deploy this? Acknowledge that I've done something. I don't care if it's particularly liked, but give me the freedom to keep doing it. Um, rather than feeding my ego, feed my freedom and feed my possibility to create. That's a 
don't give me reward, give me space and dignity. Um, yeah, it's a thought that I came up in conversation recently with a person uh, and that I thought was very interesting. And it also maybe takes less energy not to stand in somebody's way, maybe more. Mm. But I like a project of people who are free to move rather than uh, a project where every time somebody moves, there's somebody in the way. I'm not trying to say good for doing this, but what, I'm, I'm tr what I am trying to say is that I personally would find um, this an interesting avenue to continue exploring and refining and better understanding. Um, and I, I'm going to hopefully try and corner you at some point over the week to, to pursue some of that. Um, but this is neat. Um, I love that our community does this, and I hope that, um, that the thoughts from this work um, uh, continue to move forward because I think that they might be valuable. Thank you. I, in, in the context, uh, well, I, let me try to organize my thoughts first. The, as somebody that is running out of spoons lately, um, I, I believe in, in, in constant blame and self-pressure, uh, and I try to use my little spoons in the things that may uh, finish with Middle Earth. Uh, and there are some tasks in some of the groups. I take, for example, the security group, where I'm trying to collaborate when I have time, that they look like urgent. And for example, we have something called the front desk. We have one person from the security group every week taking care of the incoming emails and trying to, trying to answer them quickly. Which I understand there is a task that, that needs to be done, but nobody wants to do that. How, how to deal with this kind of task? I mean, they, they look like the kind of mortar thing, right? Like the, the middle earth distribution kind of thing. I understand they're not that, that urgent, but they, they are boring. And if we don't organize ourselves to do them, nobody will do them, right? Right, so Sauron takes over in the earth. Yeah. Um, if you're not happy doing it, don't do it. Um, if the project needs it, uh, we'll find a way. Um, I think as long as somebody keeps doing it, even if they don't want to, then nobody <coughs> will find a way of doing it. But that's probably the reason why we start having this file where every week we we have these names and somebody we have this rotation of names and somebody takes care in that week for that task. It's a way to end up being a way to pressure each other for, for doing that. I, I get that. I just don't see I mean Yeah, I, I like the idea of a rotation because at least one is not alone. And, and there's an upper bound on the amount of requests. But that, that everyone does it against their will, it's a red flag. And but if I don't want to do it one week, somebody else will have to do it. Somebody else will have to spend those. Weeks. Yes. So the, the whole thing is a big red flag, in my opinion. And it, it needs to be known that this is not sustainable. It is okay if one week nobody does it, in my opinion. And 
something will fall to the ground, uh, there will be delays, it will suck. It sucks more if we are abusing people into doing it. And, and when something breaks, there's a chance to start a discussion on how to make it work. Ideally, this discussion should start earlier. So I would like with this talk to raise awareness to the fact that nothing is broken but we are abusing people is enough of a motivation to start a serious discussion. We don't need to wait until everything breaks to realize we have a problem. Because, yeah, we, we can see it earlier. And I, I, I don't think I can start thinking of solutions, but I think, I mean, I would like what you said to be enough to start a serious discussion to say that part is broken it's working out of luck it can stop work at any time it's not sustainable it needs to change and then there's loads of clever people in debian if the discussion starts maybe there could be uh, somebody coming up with an idea IRC for you. Um, being asked, um, what if I can accommodate or feel I'm accommodating somebody, but that person is seeing it as competition? So what? I think I've got compromise, they think that uh, I'm, I'm just feeding them submission. Okay, then I think there's two people that are seeing the situation in a different <sighs> way, and I would. For, uh, and at that point, there is no cooperation. Uh, even though it feels like that on one side, but the other side is not feeling it like that. So it makes sense that the first step is to try and understand um, how the other person is feeling it. Where was it? Um, um, Take steps to uh, that, uh, apologies is not the right thing in this case, but take um, um, yeah this. Oh my God, my bookmark thing is going on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, active listening, it's uh, nice. Um, Try to understand how the other person is. Why the other person is not perceiving it as cooperation? Uh, try to explain to the other person, like reward what I, word in my own words, what I understood from the other person. Make sure that I understood uh, what happens, and the other person can do the same. And to reach a point in which we both agree what is the situation, at that point it may be clear. Uh, why it is that we are having two different ideas of things and whether we are really cooperating or competing or something in between. So, so um, kind of disagreeing a little bit about the some of the situations where like the weekly rotations and stuff. Um, I, I've, I've for myself at least adopted a framework that focuses on trying to remove judgment and show it from my life. Um, so I try not to do things because I should, um, but instead try and figure out why it is that I really, why I'm going to do those things and get to the point where I, I want to do them. But there are a lot of things that I don't directly want to do that, that I used to say I should do, but basically I've gotten to a point where I've said that I do them because having considered the, the options that's the best way for me to move towards the world I want. And I mean, for example, I didn't really particularly enjoy changing diapers. I didn't really enjoy taking out the trash. But on the other hand, I, as part of doing things that I, I do enjoy, like having healthy kids or living in a house uh, that isn't repulsive, I have found that those things need doing. And by untaking the time to understand why they need doing and how that creates the world, I find the motivation to do tasks 
that in a community in and of themselves wouldn't, you know, would, I would hate it if all I got to do was take out the trash. Um, but I am, I'm not doing it because I should, I'm doing it because having considered things, I've gotten to a place where that's, I understand what I choose to do to create the community I want to live in. Right. Yeah, I, I think what you say is important, that not everything I'm, I may want to do is, unpleasant, is needs to be pleasant, and, but I hope you don't feel abused in you having a need to change diapers or pick up the trash. I think the, 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 the turning point is when, uh, when that doesn't feel like an everyday chore that enables something but feels like uh, some, something I didn't sign up for, something that is positively making my world works, and, and and there's I think a line somewhere between these two parts where, and that line can only be drawn, I believe, by the person who's living the situation, and from the outside I can only trust them because I. I I'm not in, in their shoes, I, I, I can't judge better than them what's their energy expense for things. Uh, I think, yeah. uh, microphone. Oh, oh, sorry, you were first. Uh, I'm blinded by these lights. Sure, no problem. So, thank you very much for highlighting that people need to check their own motivations from time to time. Um, my own experience um, for many, many years of being involved is motivations come and go. It's all too easy, however, to start something because you're interested and get stuck with it. it you know, um, your own time, the number, of, the number of spoons you have to be able to do, the tasks that you think you need to do, will come and go. Uh, it's important always to consider what you committed to, and yeah, consider dropping things, move on, go and find something else. You may come back again, but don't feel you have to to keep on doing something just because well, that's, you've been or always been doing it. It's really, really important. Thank you for pushing that. Yeah, thank you for all of this. I would like to add what I think might be missing. It seems like most of the suggestions are about the individual and the individual's choice, and also individual's choices to help individuals who may feel that they've been abused or pushed too far. Um, but I, I think it would be good to insert into these conversations the topic of not just bad shoulds, unreasonable rules, but common understandings about how work should be distributed or might best be distributed so that some of those tasks that are so unpleasant that seem, people seem to do to their own detriment might actually be appreciated as more crucial than more believed because there was an unreasonably cheap supply of labor uh, that has been hurt. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good point. Um, I um, wanted to, uh, thank you again. <laughs> I wanted to bounce back on what was said earlier regarding um, uh, unreasonable, I guess it's unreasonable expectations regarding, uh, for example, the security work and front desk. I, I think there's a broader cultural problem we need to address as well regarding expectations, for example, of uptimes. Like I worked as a system in for a long time where we'd be on call for when machines would fall down. And I believe there are certain tasks that cannot be accomplished without abuse, basically. Like, if you expect people to wake up in the middle of the night to attend machines, I, I, I doubt that people really want to do that work at all. 
So to fix that problem, we may need to drop certain things altogether and we need to collectively make that decision and it's not something that we can just work around and that we need to collectively make those choices and that's something that's actually very hard to do in some extent because it, it's a cultural, social problem we need to solve. And the, the question I, uh, unrelated question I had is, I feel that the people that should hear what you are saying may not be here right now. And I, I have this feeling sometimes that in, the, in our community there is this group of people that have that knowledge and that respect each other and there is a gap between that group and the people that, or at least I feel I need sometimes to intervene with people that I, I do not know how to approach them at all because there's this gap that they're, they're, even, that even I would, if I would talk to them they would not actually listen to me. <laughs> And I, I don't know where to begin with, like how to. So if somebody is if, some, if somebody's not actively listening to you, there's no way to make them actively listening to you, basically. And I don't know where to go. I know it may maybe pausing us, the us and them kind of situation, and, but I, I don't know where to go from here. Sometimes. Right. The, the video will be recorded, and there will be a link to it, and the notes will be posted in my blog. Um, but, um, but I. At least, if there's a call that is aware, it may spread. If not in words, then in practices over time. And that, for me, would be a massive achievement. I just to really quickly tie together the parts of the last two comments. It would be awesome to know and have better uh, awareness of some of these tasks that are Happening, happening in groups that nobody wants to do. Um, I mean, I know the security team does a lot of work, but I didn't realize that you all were doing a rotation to, and we're having problems. Uh, not that I have free time to step in, but, uh, but these are the sorts of things that would be nice to know. I mean, I know that in the BTS, there's been one person who's been dealing with the spam for forever, um, and that's a totally thankless job. And it's only recently that it's starting to become obvious that uh, it's just too much for a single person to deal with. And um, there's lots of jobs like this that they're sort of helpful for the community, but we don't communicate that, that they're going on. And, and it might, I don't know how to solve this problem, but maybe just continuing to talk about these, these jobs that we need done. And maybe the solution is to you know, hire or make people more uh, aware that these tasks are a problem. I'm happy if at the end of this talk there's an awareness begins and solutions will come. Uh, somebody tells me, the, uh, please somebody tell me how we are running with time because I think we... Right, last question. Uh, so maybe comment to the last few comments. Uh, I, uh, I remember re reading somewhere, it was somebody from Google or from Amazon, uh, they were talking about s s services and they were keeping services up more than promised, so people started relying more th on those services, so they started actively restarting machines to basically to, um, to, to let people know that th those are not production services, those are just testing services or something like this, so uh, this discussion and maybe, uh, because I some people are now used to, okay, there is always somebody from the security team that is, uh, or from mail, uh, mail team that is taking care of spam. So maybe if somebody, if, if we start this discussion, and if we, have, if we know that those people are overloaded, and we know it before everybody burns out and mm -hmm. say, I don't care, and I'm going to start selling, uh, uh, selling ice cream on some beach instead of dealing with uh, security issues, it's better choice and and to have uh, uh, yeah. uh, to have weaker link before we have uh, uh, we have total breakdown. Yeah, you remind me that I heard that Google is having uh, a, a a thing that elects a random employee and declares them. Unavailable for the day, no matter what. 
to make sure that uh, the, the social structure, the, the, the social organization can has fallbacks in place. And Netflix has Chaos Monkey, yeah. which is a process that kills production servers at random <laughs> to make sure that, that the infrastructure is able to cope. Um, and I don't know, I like those ideas. <laughs> that no, like institutionalizing that everybody is replaceable. Uh, on, a, on an institutional point of view, it's good to lower the, s the salaries, but on a volunteer project, it's actually good to empower uh, turnover and uh, being able to take time off when needed. Hello, uh, I've just a very quick uh, point. I heard recently a, a phone-in show where someone was talking about uh, keeping relationships working and they said that in their household they have a list of tasks for her to do and a list of tasks for him to do and in between they have a list of tasks that nobody's going to do and you can move things back and forth between the three lists and if you don't object to things being on the, you know, I'm no longer going to clean the toilet then it just doesn't get clean and we can see that it's not going to get clean maybe we should have a list of we're not doing it anymore. And then if someone else goes, oh, actually, I don't mind doing that, then it gets picked up. I mean, we've got the work needed uh, list for, for the infrastructure stuff. Yeah. Um, I've seen people saying, we were tired of fighting over who cleans the carpet, so we bought uh, an automatic robotic vacuum cleaner, uh, or a dishwasher, or some people saying, we're tired of arguing about who cleans the house, we hired a cleaner. Yeah. Um, 